Hey internet, Sarah here and you're watching Wrapped. Welcome to our New Year's special. It is still currently 2022, but by the next time you guys see me, it'll be 2023 and I literally can't believe it. Welcome to the internet's most favorite show and that might be, you know, a little one-sided on that opinion, but we are here to bring you all kinds of fun craft news, updates, uh, and some fun things that we find around on the internet that we wanna share with you. Definitely stay tuned to the end of the video because like always, I got a little something for you and I can't wait to share it with you. And while we're at it, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel so you can see everything that we put out. The first one is quite the topic for me because it's something I try every single year. And of course I found this because I'm trying again, but I'm going to get myself a planner and I am going to stick with it. And remember that I said that to you guys. So I was looking around for a new planner, which I always do, and I have spent quite a lot of money on planners and planning supplies and stickers and little things that cut little things out, and most of those things are still in their boxes. So I thought we'd go a little bit different this time, and I found a virtual class that you can make your own planner. And I thought maybe that would hold me more accountable to actually writing in it and making it the way that I wanted it to be, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So it's patch.com, and it does say that it's a teen uh, event, but it doesn't have any restrictions listed on it. It's also a virtual event, so I'm not even sure if they would even know that you're not a teen. I'm definitely not gonna tell anyone that you, you know, used a teen virtual planner event to make it. I think it's gonna look up really cool. They're gonna give you um, a list of things that you'll need to start and there's simple things like binders, markers, anything that you want to embellish this planner with. And I thought that was pretty neat. So I think that's something I might try this year. And it looks like the event is January 13th and I'm gonna make sure to link everything down below for you guys so you can find it super easy. Number two on my list is just kind of reminiscing about my own year. And this year, I can't be alone here when I'm saying 2021 and 2022 feel like just one long continuous year, right? It, I started making a list of everything that happened this year and things that, uh, how I felt about certain things. And I'm like, wait a minute, that happened in 2021. Or was that 2022? What month is it? And it's crazy how I could not tell them apart, but every year before that I could. So I think we're all kind of on the same boat that it's 2022 and 2021 definitely feel like one straight year. But it wasn't, it was a whole year of itself and TGG and myself, we did a lot. Alex was already born this year. She was born last July. So I was still kind of navigating uh, being a, a first time mom and a business owner. Cause Alex came to work with us. She started coming to work with us at two weeks and I really thought I was gonna go right back to work and that didn't happen. So kind of got a little patchy between two and 12 weeks for sure. But by January, she was here pretty much every day uh, with a few hiccups that we would have to stay home for. So that was really hard for me because I had to change everything. I'm used to be able to get up from my desk and just go do things as I feel the need, but I had to make sure that she was either napping or fed or taking care of or someone was watching her. So once I did get that situated, the mom guilt set in. And I have been dealing with the mom guilt all year. I still deal with it and I have a feeling that, and most of you are probably saying it as you're watching my video, it's never going to go away. <laughs> but I definitely this year have found a lot of better ways to balance it. So I was very happy about that because probably the whole January through the whole spring would probably have been my hardest part trying to figure out how do you divvy up your day appropriately? And when you do divvy it up and then people are left out, what do you do with that? So it was guilt on top of guilt. And uh, I'm definitely one of those people that I, when I come to work, I work all day. And then when I go home, sometimes I work. You feel guilty about everything. I'm just sitting there, you know, designing vinyl or checking a listing or anything that's work related. And I can't help but think I'm, so guilty i'm a bad mom i'm not doing things right because i'm not spending all the time with alex and although i want to spend all that time with alex it's in my head it's just not realistic that i can sit here and do all my work and play with her as a newborn infant and it's it became really hard to divide my time because i have to run my business i have to work but also this cute little adorable baby wants and needs my time and 
I definitely had a hard time deciding where, you know, to prioritize my time. I don't know if I did everything right. I probably didn't. And that's just more of the mom guilt pounding on top because I will always look back and wonder, should I have done more that time? Or should I have taken off that weekend? Or should I have done this? And I think that's just gonna unfortunately be something that moms are always living with the husband guilt i mean not spending enough time with jason and trying there's only so many hours of the day and it's very unfortunate for us especially women that it winds up feeling like guilt because we shouldn't feel guilty for having to work we shouldn't feel guilty for playing with your baby instead of your husband or playing with your husband instead of your baby not you know playing with your husband not talking to your friends, not being able to text everyone back or message everyone back all the time. As soon as they message you, of course, I think we're all in the same boat now when you're just letting messages go for four or five days. And my favorite friends are definitely the ones that I don't have to apologize to anymore. Listen, I thought today was Tuesday. I didn't realize it was Thursday of the next week. The best advice for, that I have learned from this year, and granted, I'm totally still learning, is being confident in your choices. Towards the second half of the year, I was more confident in where my time was. So even if Jason's darting a dirty look at me because I might be working or that little bit of guilt starts creeping in my head that I'm working, I know that I allotted a certain amount of time and, and I did. I didn't work past a certain time. I'm very lucky in the sense that Alex goes to bed at 4 p.m. So I don't work. When I get home, I don't work from the time I get home till the time she's sleeping. And after she's sleeping, it's whatever. And weekends, I started taking them off completely. And that's kind of how I started allocating my time better, I guess you can say. And I felt good with it. So as soon as I knew I felt good with it, I held in that feeling so that no one else could make me feel bad later on. And it's not usually other people feeling making you feel bad. Of course, it's you making yourself feel bad, but confidence. Confidence is definitely the biggest key to that. Have confidence in your choices. If that's what you want to do, then no one else should be able to tell you anything about it. Any comments that someone might come at you like, oh, so you were just working instead of watching your baby sleep or whichever they might say to you? Yes. Yes, I was. And I enjoyed it. And that's life. You only get one chance at this life. And if you're happy, your baby's healthy, as long as you got a level head on your shoulders, you're making good choices. Just be confident in those choices. Don't let anyone tell you what you're doing is wrong or make you feel like what you're doing is wrong. That's definitely the biggest takeaway I would want everyone to have from this video. As far as TGG though, they, TGG had a lot of big things this year. We went to our first convention that was CultureCon and that happened in March. And that was a lot of fun. That was the first real time that me and Jason got to meet people from the internet. <laughs> And we had a great time. It was uh, very overwhelming at first and I was very anxious. I always fear that I'm going to forget someone's name and that person is going to hate me for the rest of my life, even though that's completely crazy to even think. And most people, actually everyone, has been super nice about it. And I think we're all on the same page that we don't know what each other look like until we see each other in person. I'm like, wait a minute, I forgot that I haven't clicked on all these little profile pictures and zoomed in and looked at, you know, your wedding album and then looked at your normal album to see what you look like on a normal day. It's, it was uh, very overwhelming, but we got through it. We had a lot of fun. That was a long one. I th we went from Wednesday night to Sunday night. I th no, we might, we might've came on Monday. So that was a long time and that would have been my first time being away from Alex because Alex didn't go, she stayed home. Uh, so that was both exciting and, you know, a little bit, we'll say sad, but that's not the word I wanted, you know, just a little different. We got a work nanny in 2022. That happened in February, that happened quick and, and things got uh, a lot better when that happened. Uh, it was a lot easier to navigate my days when Crystal came in and started helping me with Alex. The Great American Craft Expo. We hosted our first expo last this year. And that was huge. We had no idea what we were doing. We, we, you know, we had an idea, but of course we've never planned a convention. And also just so you know, there is no convention for Dummies Book. Although that should be on their list this year, I hope. We kind of got a late start to planning it this year. So it was like super hectic between March and June to get everything done, but we pulled it off fantastic. Everything was perfect, as perfect as it could be. 
We had it at Oaks uh, Convention Center in Oaks, PA, and we had a really good turnout. I want to say that Brian uh, told me we did 2,000 people over the whole weekend. That wasn't all in one day or one shot or anything. That was over the course of the weekend. Uh, but I was very impressed with the numbers. I was very impressed with all the teachers because, you know, there was things that we had to improvise for at the last minute. Patty was running around like a crazy person. I don't think she ever left Target. And when she did, did leave Target, she was running back to Target for something that we forgot. And the staff, the staff that we had were fabulous. For, from putting all that stuff together to taking it down, having a booth at, at a convention is one thing, but hosting the convention, that's a whole nother thing. You think you got a lot of cleanup after your friends leave your house after a party, you have no idea what the convention's like. Speaking of, I didn't have to clean up. We badly planned this whole thing and the Great American Craft Expo landed on the same weekend as One Day Slam. And One Day Slam is the car show that me and Jason help host. I had to run from Oaks on Sunday morning all the way down to Levittown, PA to be on my feet all day and help them at One Day Slam while everyone else finished Sunday up at Oaks and then broke everything down. I don't think Jason got home until like 10.30 at night. It was crazy. We learned a lot and we had a lot of fun. Speaking of conventions, that July was the first time that we got to go to TumblrCon and I'm obsessed. I'm in love with TumblrCon. It was great. Um, there's no comparison between all of the conventions because they're all great in their own way. But Nikki and Steel Magnolia, they really did great over at TumblrCon. So that was different for me because I didn't have to host a convention. I was just at a convention. I was really busy with our booth, of course, but I was able to actually go and breathe and talk to people. And I think at one point I even got lunch. So it was a great time and we'll be there again this upcoming year, but that will be in June this year. Last summer, summer 2022, shall we? We came out with printed vinyl. I had I had this printer for a year before we actually started printing vinyl. It was a very bad uh, timing because we got the printer the day, two days before I got induced with Alex. So only Jason got to come here and get the training on the machine and he retained none of that information because all he could think about was his wife is at home and he's about to be a dad. <laughs> so the printer sat and it sat and it sat and then I got sick of it and I brought someone in here to teach me how to use it and I'm still learning but that was a big thing that I did this year also was learn how to use the printer, learn how to even properly cut vinyl. That was a little bit of a, you know, trial and error. And Adobe, holy crap, Adobe. That is something, no wonder people go to school for that. That is a whole entire uh, monument of its own to deal with and I'm still learning that. I think I will be learning that forever. But I have learned surprisingly a lot and it's starting to get easier. I can't wait until I get to dive more into it in 2023. Maybe I'll do some YouTube courses, probably not. I'll probably just keep clicking around until I'm sick of clicking. But Adobe has definitely been something I've been trying to master this year. November was our four year anniversary. I can't believe it's been four years. It's been the craziest four years of my whole life. Of course, I don't have too much to compare it to because I'm only 33. So uh, it's, it's definitely been quite the learning curve and I have been loving every step of the way. I have tacky tape on my list. I don't remember exactly if that was a 2022 or a 2021 thing, but it was definitely bigger in 2022. That was something Jason, you know, we were all using the double-sided sticky tape and the cat scratch tape and Jason contacted our supplier and we kind of designed our own and we designed the paper that you cut through to be better for crafters so the glitter just falls off of it and it was one of the first items that we actually got to make or you know have our influence put in to make that is sold everywhere so our tacky tape definitely had crafters in mind when we had it made and it's been great ever since. Micah's came out, of course we all know about Micah. The UV resin came out. Now that actually came out in December of 2021, but uh, 2022 was the big push for it. And the UV resin was really fun because Jason came up to me with that. I'm just minding my own business, walking around the warehouse, and he came up to me uh, with my bottle of UV resin that I'd gotten off Amazon. He's like, something about what would you use this for? And I'm like, you. People use it for the, back then, the uh, 
tumbler toppers were really popular. So Jason <laughs> glued all this random stuff to a topper to see if he could do it. And he kept asking me more and more like, well, what else can I do with it? What else can I do with it? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't use UV resin. He asked me, could you coat a tumbler in it? And immediately I said, no. And I had to step back for a second. I'm like, maybe? I don't know. So I went into my admin group chat and I asked them, I'm like, would you put UV resin on a tumbler? I mean, obviously not for your final coat or anything, but why not use it for in between coats? And everyone was on the same page, like, sure. As long as you cure it correctly and all that good stuff, why not? Jason became obsessed. He immediately fabricated himself a, um, big UV light holder, which you guys will see a lot in my lives. He ordered the half gallon jugs of UV resin and it jumped off from there. And why that's my favorite thing of the year is because he came up with it. He asked all the questions. He got everything made down to the label. I mean, him and Brian spent a week on that label going back and forth, back and forth. And he really poured his heart and soul into that resin project and it really paid off for us. It was great. There's so many more things that we're able to make and do with this UV resin. And I'm glad that it really worked out for him actually. So I promised you guys a little hook if you stayed and hung out with me to the end of the video. And this time again, it's about the Great American Craft Expo because I'm getting so excited it's coming up. That is, so the Great American Craft Expo in 2023 is August. It's gonna be the weekend of August 12th. And we are finally ready to announce the teachers. I know that I have been, been giving you guys sneak peeks of some of the teachers on our show, but we have even more to announce and that's gonna be January 6th. So make sure that you like the Great American Craft Expo page. They also We also have our own standalone website for the Craft Expo. If there are updates to be had, they will be set on wrapped for sure. And then Tuesdays in the Glitter Guy, we have Q&A. So that is also a great place to find information about the Great American Craft Expo, but you can definitely mark your calendars for January 6th. We are going to announce the teachers and I'm pretty sure Sean said that tickets for the classes will also be on sale that day. So I will have a lot more information in the next few days for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for it that. So I do have a great video for you guys. This one is from Emery and Kay. She, uh, her name is Kimberly, of course. I like that I said, of course, like you guys just knew, but you guys might know after this video because she has a lot of really great videos. The one that I'm gonna link for you is vinyl wrapping with a handle. And I thought that was pretty cool because handles are the worst, at least for the crafting process. But then of course the drinking process, fantastic. So they're great to have, horrible to craft with, put it under the category of chunky glitter, we get it. Kim's gonna help you. So the reason that I like her channel is I am very drawn to people with great voices, obviously that's pretty normal that you like, it's easy to listen to them but she gets right to it. Um, she's very detailed in her voiceovers and they're quick. You, there's not gaps in between that you're lapsing between all of the steps. She gets right to it. She's very detailed in it. And as a crafter, that's something that I need. And that's how it's easier for me to learn that way. Also uh, with ADHD and a bunch of you guys know this, get to the point. I can't. I gotta get right to the point. You gotta tell me the end before you tell me the beginning. And she doesn't leave out any of the little things. Like a great example is when she's cutting the vinyl around her handle, she's even telling you which way her X-Acto knife is pointing. So that, and that's a little thing that a lot of people don't think about until you're literally doing it and you're like, wait a minute, how come it's working for her but it's not working for me? And you don't see that her blade is just uh, facing the other way. So it's, it's those little things that really help me and you don't have to travel to other little videos to figure it out, which is something we definitely had to do in 2018 if you guys are crafting back then. So check out Kim's video. I'm gonna throw it down in the description of this video. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching the wrapped New Year special. I can't believe we're already here. And definitely like and subscribe to our channel so you can see all the episodes of Wrapped and everything else that we have coming out. See you next year.